Nine organized under the Department of Defense. Two under the Department of Homeland Security. Two under the Department of Justice. One under the State Department. One under the Department of Energy. One secretive standalone agency. And one agency to rule them all. They're not really rule them all. They're very separate, have separate cultures. Just try and help them get along and publish the presidential daily brief. They're America's 18 intelligence agencies. Get to know them. Get to love them. Maybe float them a nap and go to work for them. Next up on Game Theory Today. Guys, it's time for some Game Theory. Welcome back to Game Theory Today. I am Eric Garland. I am an intelligence professional, and I am a super nerd and avid lover of all things intelligence agencies, and I am here to share America's intelligence agencies with you. But first off, before we get going, a huge thank you to all you subscribers. Uh, we hit YouTube partner status after the last video, thanks to you guys, and uh, that means we're going to be funding uh, future videos here, and there's still 0% Elon Musk involved with this production, which given the amount of time I've spent on Twitter is pretty refreshing. It's nice. That's all because of you guys. You make it fun. Your comments are great. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you'd like and you're not subscribed, hit subscribe, hit the bell, and you will be noticed as to when the future videos come out, especially this series coming up on America's 18 intelligence agencies that'll no doubt be interspersed by various stories of treason, stupidity, uh, and news of the day that needs treatment. Uh, but this is going to be fun. We're having fun. You guys are going to make it fun. So let's go. National security intelligence agencies are like antibiotics for venereal disease. You might not know what they're called or where they're located, and you might not ever need one. But if you ever do, you hope they're somewhere and that there are professionals involved, and life would probably be a lot worse without them. Perhaps an awkward analogy, but I think it's an apt one. So why am I going to talk about intelligence agencies in particular? Well, they're watching our backs. They are more necessary than one realizes. And uh, as we revisit the what we call the Trump era or the last few years in, uh, in world civilization, uh, and we discover how much we've had malign powers who have been attacking us at the, at the, uh, the level of our civilization and our society, not necessarily attacking us with bombs and tanks, but through covert action, you know, we have to look at the role of other nations' intelligence services, other malign actors, and our own national security agencies that defend against that kind of thing. Well, they need their time in the spotlight so that they can get their, uh, their propers and uh, perhaps some more budget and, uh, you know, do even more for us next time. And uh, these are people, these are professionals that don't get a lot of time in the spotlight, kind of by definition. Uh, as speaking as somebody who's been in the intelligence world for 25 years, it's a profession that can be uh, boring, uh, punctuated by dangerous and or traumatic information or experiences. Uh, it's something that you generally can only talk to other professionals about, uh, yet it's also hugely rewarding and very important. And that's why I've kind of dedicated my, my life to it. And I, I love everything sort of associated with the activity. So we're going to be looking at 18 of America's intelligence agencies and their missions, their histories, when they were founded, who's running them right now. And uh, I've got a special section for each agency, which is going to be how they are depicted in movies, television, and pop culture. Let's get down to what is an intelligence agency? Well, it's an institution that operates under the law in the United States uh, to collect information, interpret that information, and use it to create products for a variety of customers in the government. Now, what is a product? Now, spoiler alert, it's probably a Word document that was written by some nerd. Um, it, you know, it's the, it's the encapsulation of a story that has been produced from a variety of sources and methods that are secret throughout various intelligence agencies. So that story that goes on to that nerd's document might depend on satellite images, intercepted communications, or what some human source told us. But at the end of the day, it's a story that a decision maker can rely on when it matters most. Now, the customers for this information um, you know, are fairly limited. These are people with very serious decisions to make. The two most f uh, famous customers of intelligence you may have heard of, the President of the United States and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. 
Now, every morning, the President of the United States gets a product known as the Presidential Daily Brief, or the PDB. It's a combined effort of 18 different agencies, and it's coordinated uh, at the Office of Director of National Intelligence, and they put it all together, and whatever's most important for the President that day, that goes over to the White House, and it is disseminated to a very, very small number of individuals, and the most serious decisions are made on that basis. Otherwise, as intelligence agencies go to inform for the most part, our military services represented by the Joint Chiefs. Um, if In case the, uh, the military has to do one of its two basic jobs, kill people and break their stuff. We need the best information about that. And that's the intelligence uh, activity for the most part in the United States. There are other customers, uh, several federal customers, and this can go down as far as state and local um, agencies that receive limited intelligence products about national security. Um, I believe governors can be briefed uh, on need to know basis for things that are going on in their territory. And uh, all this is to keep us safe. So what makes America's intelligence agencies special? Well, first, they're probably the best funded in the world. I say probably because, well, we don't really know how much money they have. I mean, do we? Uh, I mean, let's face it, at the end of the day, some of this stuff is going to be secret. There are certain budgets that are published, and to be sure, they are bigger than Spain's, Andorra's, Malta's, the Seychelles Islands. Uh, America is the richest economy that's ever been, and the largest military power that's ever been, and we have 18 agencies. Uh, how much are they funded? Well, we know what they say on, in print. Let's just assume that we're number one. So for that reason alone, that makes America very interesting. Uh, and the second thing, and I think it's the most important thing, is that America actually cares about civil liberties. America, uh, having been the target of decades and decades of KGB disinformation operations where anything the U.S. does to protect itself is automatically branded as, as somehow nefarious, is like we're not ever allowed to protect ourselves or any of our allies or any of our values in the world, whereas these malign you know, actors can do no wrong, and that was a story that was spread throughout. Uh, American society. But in reality, American intelligence agencies are like the only ones that give a crap about, you know, keeping your privacy whatsoever. Let me tell you, from the perspective of even some of our most cherished allies, um, they don't care about that stuff. If you're on their soil and it protects the nation, they're going to do it. If they need to know it about you or anything to do with you, they're going to know it. And America is special because we actually try and keep to the laws that uh, we say govern all these activities, and when they don't, it's a scandal. And we, you know, have oversight committees added and, and this and that. So, uh, you know, makes America a model for the world still. Intelligence agencies deal in what's known as classified information. Well, or classified intelligence. Well, what is classified intelligence? Well, every agency has different sources and methods. These are all kept secret even from each other, because we don't want to compromise these things, because uh, you know, we might get information through technologies that people don't know about, or we might have specific human sources that are telling us stuff on the sly. We don't want them busted. So all this is kept tight. Even the, 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 the results of the information they give us or that the technology gives us, we, that needs to be kept under wraps. And that's the system of classified intelligence that emerged after World War I. There are three levels of classified intelligence. There's confidential secret, and top secret. And it depends on how important the information is. Uh, you've probably heard these terms before. Here's what they mean. Confidential intelligence is information that would cause damage or otherwise be prejudicial to the United States or be to the benefit of some foreign power if it got in the wrong hands. That's pretty general. Cause damage, be prejudicial. Uh, secret intelligence ramps it up to serious damage, and then top secret is exceptionally grave damage to the national security of the United States. So, how do I get a hold of this classified intelligence? Well, generally, it, uh, you know, if it's not part of your job, you don't and don't try. Um, but let's say you do. Well, you need a security clearance. You, they have to check you to make sure you're okay to have access to United States classified intelligence. So what do you do? Well, generally you gotta apply for the, a job with the United States government. You're gonna fill out standard form 86, which you're going to put down every single fact about you that you can fit on a piece of paper, all of your financial background, your family, your friends, everything you can possibly fit on there. And after that, you are going to be subject to what's known as a single source background 
uh, investigation or an SSBI, where they're going to go at your family, friends, friends of family, pets, pets of family, pets, friends, foreign connections to pets, uh, pretty much everywhere you've lived, everything you've ever done. And, you know, it sounds really invasive and it is to a degree. Um, but, you know, basically they're looking for a few things about you. Um, are you in enormous debt? Um, do you have really embarrassing practices on the side of whatever sort that you'd be embarrassed or could be blackmailed if it got out to anybody? Um, you know, are you addicted to any drugs that could be, you know, leveraged against you? Or do you have any unsavory foreign contacts? And, and the, you, this has to rise to a certain level to be of, of interest to, to keep you out of certain jobs. For example, uh, if you grew up, uh, you know, on the Canadian border and you played hockey across the border a lot and you have some friends in Ontario or British Columbia or, or Quebec, uh, probably not a big deal. Um, if you made really good friends with the son of the head of Kyrgyzstan intelligence, um, and you go over there twice a year, that might be much more of a problem and would keep you from receiving access to America's most cherished and important secrets. Another question is, who works at an intelligence agency? Now, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of mistaken perceptions about this, thanks to the movies, um, and I regret to inform you that it is 99% dorks and 1% assassins, or maybe as high as 1%, it's sub 1% in the assassin range. I've been working in intelligence for 25 years, and um, I do not have to wear tuxedos very often. I have not gone on a hang glider uh, with a laser gun of any sort. Uh, and if any of you know where I could apply for any of these jobs. Without further ado, here are America's 18 intelligence agencies, starting with the Umbrella Agency, and then going down alphabetical from there. Number one is the Office of Director of National Intelligence, founded April 22, 2005. Uh, its headquarters is in McLean, Virginia. Its director is Avril Haines, and it, they are the publishers of the Presidential Daily Brief and in charge of herding cats. They are there to try and coordinate uh, the National Intelligence Program with the other 17 agencies, and uh, there's a whole lot of cultures that they have to work between, and uh, they have a very tough job. Number two, Air Force Intelligence, founded 1948. Headquarters is at Joint Base San Antonio, Texas. The commander is Lieutenant General Kevin B. Kennedy Jr. And they provide global intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, cyber and electronic warfare, information operations, and serve as the service cryptologic component responsible to the NSA and Cyber Command. Number three is Army Intelligence. It's the oldest and biggest. It was founded by George Washington. You may have heard of him in 1776. Headquarters is at Fort Belvoir in Virginia. Uh, its commander, uh, commander of INSCOM, is Major General Michelle Bredenkamp and Deputy Chief of Staff G2. The G2 is the, the head of intelligence officer, uh, Lieutenant General Laura A. Potter. And its mission is to execute mission command of operational intelligence and security forces, conduct, synchronize, and integrate worldwide multidiscipline and all source intelligence and security operations, deliver linguist support and intelligence related advanced skills training, acquisition support, logistics, communications, and other specialized capabilities in support of Army, Joint and Coalition Commands, and the US intelligence community. Like I said, they're the biggest, they do the most. Number four is the most famous one, the Central Intelligence Agency, founded 1947. Headquarters is in Langley, McLean, Virginia. Uh, its director is William Burns, and its mission is collect foreign intelligence, produce objective analysis, conduct covert action. They're really the only one that kind of puts that right out there, like, we do spy stuff, we're the CIA. Next up is Coast Guard Intelligence, which is Alexander Hamilton founded it, kind of. Um, it was founded in 1790, if we count Hamilton, otherwise the modern version of this was born in 1950, uh, and the very, very modern version of it was born under the Department of Homeland Security after 2001. Its headquarters is in Southeast Washington, D.C., and its mission is to conduct intelligence activities to provide timely, objective, relevant, and actionable maritime intelligence to drive operations, enable mission support, and inform decision-making for the Coast Guard and Homeland Security missions and national security requirements. And its director is Assistant Commandant for Intelligence and Criminal Investigations, or the CG2, Rear Admiral Andrew Sugimoto. The one that had Mike Flynn, the Defense Intelligence Agency, founded 1961. Its headquarters is at Joint Base Anacostia Bowling in Washington, D.C. Its director is Lieutenant General Scott Barrier. 
and its mission is to produce, analyze, and disseminate military intelligence information to combat and non-combat military missions, conduct intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, ISR, operations. That's a very compact way of putting it. Turns out DIA is way bigger than even I understood, and that's going to be a very cool episode. Protecting the nukes, we have the Department of Energy Office of Intelligence and Counterintelligence. Founded in 1977, its headquarters is in Washington, D.C. Its director is Stephen K. Black, and its mission is to provide decision makers with intelligence about nukes, catch spies trying to get nukes, and especially trying to get our nukes. The one Trump tried to sabotage, Homeland Security Intelligence and Analysis. Founded in 2002, its headquarters is at DHS headquarters, Nebraska Avenue Complex in Washington, D.C. Its director is Ken Weinstein, Undersecretary of Homeland Security for Intelligence and Analysis, uh, also known as DHS INA. And its mission is to deliver intelligence to state, local, tribal, and territorial and private sector partners and develop intelligence from those partners for the department and the intelligence community. And it's particularly important and noteworthy because it's the only intelligence agency that produces intelligence products for state and local officials. A shout out to my homies at the State Department Bureau of Intelligence and Research, founded October the 1st, 1945. Its headquarters is in Foggy Bottom, uh, Washington, DC. Its director is Brent M. Holmgren. And its job is providing intelligence based on foreign public opinion and diplomatic communications. Alexander Hamilton founded this one too, kind of. It's the Treasury Office of Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, founded 1961, which granted is after Hamilton got shot, but I'm gonna make an argument for this one. Uh, the Department of the Treasury's financial intelligence goes back as far as 1781 when Hamilton put in a function to stop the Continental Army from being defrauded. So I'm gonna argue for the 1781 date in the actual episode. Uh, the headquarters is in Southeast Washington, DC. Note, it's not in the Treasury Building, which is of course right next to the White House in Northwest DC. Its director is Undersecretary of the Treasury for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, Brian E. Nelson. Fun fact, uh, Treasury Intelligence didn't have a director for a couple years there under Trump. When you hear the mission, you might understand why it wasn't much of a priority. Uh, the mission is directing the Treasury's effort to cut the lines of financial support for terrorists, fight financial crime, <coughs> Jared Kushner, <coughs> enforce economic sanctions against rogue nations, not very popular with Trump for obvious reasons, and to combat the financial support of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. The Drug Enforcement Administration's Office of National Security Intelligence, founded 1973, headquarters is in Arlington, Virginia. The director, and I, I can't find the exact intelligence director right now, the closest thing I've got to it is the special agent in charge, or the SAC, James R. Reed, who is the head of EPIC, which is a great nickname for the El Paso Intel Center, uh, and they do national security analysis on the role of narcotics. Then there's the other FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation National Security Branch. Founded officially in 2005, the FBI has had a spy catching role uh, for decades since the inception of the modern agency under J. Edgar Hoover. Um, its headquarters is at the J. Edgar Hoover building in Washington, DC. Its current director is Larissa L. Knapp and it's in charged with counterterrorism and countering foreign intelligence operations on U.S. soil. Officially, it is the only intelligence agency that is allowed to operate on U.S. soil. To my knowledge, Department of Homeland Security takes in intelligence from outside of the United States and applies it to the homeland. FBI can actually collect intelligence on the homeland. Marine Corps Intelligence Founded in the year 2000, its headquarters is at Hockmouth Hall, Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia. Its director is Major General William H. Seeley III, and its mission is to provide intelligence products that will help the Marines kill people faster and more efficiently. And the fun thing about Marines is they won't even take it personally or think that that's a derogatory thing at all, and it's also true. So, hoorah! The coolest and most important one that you probably don't know enough about, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, founded in 2005 uh, from a number of the agencies that were doing imagery analysis and satellite uh, data collection. 
Uh, it was coalesced into a single three-letter agency, the NGA, in 2005. Fun fact, I mean, geospatial intelligence is actually two words, which is obvious to anyone that has read national, geospatial, dash, intelligence agency. And they did it because all the big agencies have three letters. They just couldn't fit it in to three letters. Um, but they had to be three letters, so they're the NGA. Um, they're headquartered officially at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, with their second most important analytical campus out here in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, the director is Vice Admiral Frank D. Whitworth, and they provide geospatial intelligence from the seabed to space. There's a lot going on there. That is going to be a really cool episode, and uh, it's one of the unsung heroes of the intelligence world, and I'm really excited to talk about them. The most important one you probably don't know much about, in fact, nobody knew about it at all until very recently, is the National Reconnaissance Office. Officially founded in 1961, it wasn't recognized in public until 1992. Its headquarters is in Chantilly, Virginia. Its director is Christopher J. Scolese, and its mission is to develop, build, launch, and operate space reconnaissance systems and conduct intelligence-related activities for U.S. national security, there's not much more available. In fact, I may have said too much. The which? The huh? The what? It's the National Security Agency, or NSA, or no such agency, or as I like to call it, the National Surfing Association, founded in November 4th, 1952. Not really recognized until the 1980s, though. Uh, its headquarters is that the, is the, the famous Puzzle Palace, Fort Meade, Maryland. Its director is General Paul M. Nakasone, and they do SIGINT, Signals Intelligence, Collection and Analysis. If it plugs in and it does anything, NSA can find out about it. The tech nerds at the Office of Naval Intelligence, one of the oldest and coolest. This is the agency that a lot of my work in future trend analysis, technology policy analysis, and all that good stuff, that's where it comes from. My my mentors that I worked for were from ONI originally, founded in 1882 to track the adoption of steam engines and other cool things onto ships. Its headquarters is in Suitland, Maryland. Its director is Rear Admiral uh, Michael Studeman, and its mission is to collect, analyze, and produce maritime intelligence and disseminate the intelligence rapidly to strategic, operational, and tactical decision makers to meet Navy, DOD, and national requirements. That one's going to go on for a while. All of it's fun. All of it's extremely cool. Can't wait for that one. And now the last and coolest and most interesting is Space Delta 18. Man, that's something I would have made up for a like, goof. Like, come on, like make up the Space Intelligence Agency. Space Delta 18. Founded 2022, bitches. Headquarters is at National Space Intelligence Center, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. And it operates out of, I'm not making this up either, Space Operations Command, which is called the SPOC. And its mission is to outwit, outreach, and win in the space domain. And that kind of goes with the National Geospatial Intelligence, the NRO satellites, and then like protecting those assets, which are incredibly important. That's what Space Delta 18 does. And I know there's a show on Netflix that I'm probably going to pan in the actual episode that kind of makes fun of this like it's no big deal. Well, it's a big deal. 2022, they're launching the 18th Intelligence Agency. And there we go, man. I'm going to have fun nerding all the way out on each of these agencies, try and give the professionals involved some time in the spotlight as uh, thanks and appreciation for what they do. And uh, maybe as a recruitment, add, hey, you know, we need smart people in there work and help protect us. So go get a nerdy job. So until then, uh, how about you hit subscribe, hit like. Um, and leave a comment. Uh, is any of this surprising information to you? What are you looking forward to most? I'm looking to hear from you, as always. I'm Eric Garland. This is Game Theory Today. See you next time.